I've never commented on someone's Instagram post, especially someone from a sport that I've never played, and just said, like, you look stupid, or, like, yeah. random stuff. Like, this isn't even a sport. Yeah. Pickleball isn't a sport. Yeah. Whereas hundreds, hundreds of comments every single week. Yeah. The same exact thing. Yeah. It's always... Uh, Man, if this was a sport, I would definitely comment on this video. <laughs> like, yeah. You just commented on the video. Yeah. Like, it's stupid stuff. I, I, Do you get the gibberish ones, too? That Have make you no noticed sense? that on Picklehead? Yeah. Every <laughs> once in a while, you... You get a comment on there. Someone's <laughs> going to do it just watching this now. You get a yes. comment on there that says, like, it said, why, hello. <laughs> yeah. And that's the whole comment. Picklehead Podcast. Yeah, I just, <laughs> like, I just had one on my recent YouTube video that said, you are, I am. That was it. <laughs> yeah. Find, yeah. If someone in here Those. needs to confirm that and find that <laughs> recent YouTube video, you are I am. Okay. I sent I sent you a screenshot of one tonight because this was actually from a some somewhat popular and verified tennis page. They commented on our page, and what did it say? I didn't understand. Oh yeah, I don't even remember. So send stupid. the video. Send the video. Send the video. It said, and it was just a clip of. <laughs> me teaching something it didn't have a video attached to it or i didn't say go watch the full video here just said send the video i'm like i'm not it's, even going to respond i don't know what you're talking it's about so interesting like dealing <laughs> dealing with haters because i always thought like when i heard about it from people that had a big following which i don't even have a big following in comparison to these people at all like they have millions of followers and they'd be like oh yeah you get all this hate you just have to like Block it out. Block it out, move past it. And I've never done that. <laughs> like I've always just been like, what's going through this person's mind to take the time to actually write this up? I've never, yeah. never once in my life actually thought to do that. It's just random. Just yeah. crazy that people are just word warriors that get on there. And But anyways, there's just so many and comments. And if you look them up, like I'll be honest, if someone writes something like hateful on there, I will like click on their thing just to see like see hey, what they how many like. followers do these guys have or <laughs> and usually they have like three followers. Yeah. You know, or they're or, following a thousand people and they have 200 followers. Or yeah. Something. Or they don't even have a picture on there or I don't know. It's what were you saying? There, there was one there was one oh what was it? There someone commented on the one I showed oh, you yes. tonight. Oh yes. No, no, no. This oh. is different. Someone commented because I said, when haters say that you don't get a workout while playing pickleball. And the guy said, where is the workout? You guys need to put a sauna out there so that you start sweating. And I was like, fair enough. Like, meanwhile, everybody that's on the court looks like 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 me. And I'm not saying I'm in great shape. Like, you're in great shape where you're, you know. You People can tell your you're in good shape. But I'm in good shape to where it's like, I work out, but yeah. I'm not out lifting weights or something like that. Anyways, you click on the guy's profile, and he's a house four hundred pounds. <laughs> and it's just like it just goes to to say how this guy feels about himself by making that comment. Yeah. Anyways, still doesn't make me feel any better. Like reading hateful comments, that I'm just like, oh, this is just how they feel about themselves. Because you just want to say something that like <laughs> it's still nice. To where they just feel stupid. Yeah, That's I've got all a, that I want. I've gotten do. a high out of that. That's lately. it. That's how, how I've been responding lately. If I do respond, sometimes it'll be like a, I have to respond. A dude. dumb hate comment, and I'm like, ah, you're not worth. The I time. have to respond. But some, if you respond in in kindness, it is hilarious. It's just you, what to say. And most of the time, they won't respond back at all. Yeah. When you say something nice, but I know I actually learned this from Evan Slaughter. Yes, From I did too. Fit to serve. Dude's amazing. Because I've seen some people will respond something hateful on his thing and he'll he'll respond back, I hope you're having a great weekend with like a smiley face. <laughs> or, you know, whatever. It Someone is. so Evan Slaughter was on podcast, who knows, twelve or something like yeah, that. I'm gonna guess there. twelve. I'm gonna guess ten. Maybe fifteen. Okay. <laughs> Dude's amazing. You guys need to make sure you watch that podcast because that's an inspiring podcast. Yeah. He's just an incredible guy. 
there was a video that I saw, and that's exact same thing. We haven't even talked about this, but I had it had the exact same impression on me. Like that's how you respond to haters is just with something super nice, and it throws them off. It really throws them off. But someone commented, "I hate that I have to see your disgusting body on my feed." I think I like saw that. this. Yeah. Evan said. Something along the lines of like, hey, thank you so much for letting me know. Pin, pins the guy's comment as the top comment on Evan's post. Yeah. Where he's having millions of views. Yeah. Pins the dude that hated on him. And then all the comments below are just loving Evan. Like, hey, Evan, you're the best. All this stuff. Yeah. I'm just like. One of his responses to was, yeah, I, w- I went through some hard times. I'm really trying to watch my weight, you know, because people would make yeah. fun of his weight on there and say, you shouldn't have your shirt off or something like that. Like, Ooh, yeah, I'm really, who, really who working on that? it every day, but I appreciate you looking out, you know. You know who comments that is people that feel that way about themselves. Though. Probably. That's, that's, I mean, that couldn't be more true. The majority of them. Yeah. Majority, for sure. Others are just brainless. But. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, commenting back with something like, aren't you just a ray of sunshine <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. like something like that that makes me feel good yeah. but i have to reply i have that pride that's in me it's just like <laughs> i can't let that go i i just had a comment from someone i just told you i don't even remember what they said but it's like it's still just kind of got to me a little bit <laughs> it's the stupidest thing. oh yeah they said clickbait on oh, on yeah. my on my little post. bit of clickbait here a little bit of clickbait here unsubscribing or something like that it's just like why does that bug me so bad? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I have, but. I have to get to a point where it doesn't bother me either because sometimes I'll think about it at night. And this <laughs> yeah. is going to cause more hateful comments right now because they're like, <laughs> oh, we're in their head. But I don't know. Hey, that's good. Hateful comments help the page grow. So Yeah, I guess we'll take them. Maybe it, it, you know, maybe it helps pickleball grow. Heck yeah. Okay, pickleball related. We wanted to talk about those things over there. Not specifically that brand, but yeah. paddles. Specifically this brand. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about paddles for a minute. Yeah, so what I wanted to talk about. So Jack Sock, we're filming this. Uh, do we want to tell them when we're filming this? Yeah. Okay, we're filming this on Thursday, March 15th. Okay. So Jack Sock 14th. just... 14th. Jack Sock just played with this paddle. We don't know the results of the tournament, obviously. PPA Austin. By the time you guys watch this, you'll have known the results of the tournament for two weeks. No. You'll just... For, for a, a day. few days. Yeah. Uh, but he's playing with the Control Air now. Not the Control Air. Power Air. The Power Air. The thinner paddle. So the thinner that your paddle is, the more power that you get, the thicker that the paddle is generally. Let's talk about The that. more control that you get. And so he switched paddles, and I thought it was interesting. Uh, Spencer just told me this during our last recording that he switched paddles. And so I thought that was interesting because he's like an advocate for the Lux Control Air, which is the paddle that I actually use. And it's the paddle that I need to use because of the amount of pickleball that I play. But what we were talking about is as a pro, you want as much power as you can possibly get because you have enough control and by control what i mean is you don't need that extra thickness on your paddle so that you can hit the ball softly uh, as you're dinking or softer yeah. softer because with this this is probably one of the worst beginner paddles uh the power air i wouldn't recommend it to a beginner because as a beginner you need more control in your game and it's like for me right now i need more control than power i feel like i can get it low to power but since I don't play pickleball all day, every day, like these pros, I need that added control uh, to where I can hit my dinks in and stuff yep. like that. But as pros, they're looking to get more power. So he switched paddles recently, even though he is like the Lux guy. Everybody knows him as the Lux guy. Yeah. So I thought that was super interesting. But that's one of the key things that will tell you your level as well as your paddle is how thick or thin it should be. Yeah. And I still play with a. I guess my paddle is thin-ish, but it's more of a control version. Let's talk about there's two different types, two different understandings of yeah. control. Which I only heard about recently. Yeah. So I think that some people think that control means what you just said, being able to not... So the 
ball doesn't rocket off your paddle when you have to hit a soft shot. That's what I've always thought. So it helps control it so that you can, and, and that's what I've always thought too, so that you're not firing the ball off your paddle when you're trying to just tap it. So, I mean, the thickness would help you so that you're, so it's not firing off. But also, I think there is a second understanding of control. I don't think this was purposeful, but that is you're able to, with all these carbon fiber paddles, grab the ball a little bit more off of your paddle, Mm -hmm. put more spin on your paddle, so control the ball by putting more spin on it, which that's a different paddle from a control paddle, which stops you from rocketing the ball off off your paddle right so um i mean that's a good point to make the other point i was going to make from what you said jack sock i did notice that now he's playing with this one which is more of a power paddle but he was playing singles we're only on singles day one right now it is possible he would switch it but uh i'm gonna ask you os should somebody play with a different paddle Singles versus doubles, in your opinion. And while you answer, I'm going to grab my paddle real quick. Okay. Yeah, in my opinion, I don't think it's smart to switch <clears throat> between singles and doubles. We'll see what Jack does. I highly doubt he will. And you guys watching this obviously know, those of you that have watched, so I might look like an idiot, might not. But I don't think that he will change. And the reason that it's not smart is because it's a completely different feel. If I change paddles, especially such a drastic change from the Lux Control Air that's 20 millimeters thick, and this, I don't even know how thick this is. I would guess 9 millimeters. I mean, it's fairly You a millimeter thin. guy? It's, <laughs> it's fairly thin. It's, um, I mean, is, that, is it thinner than yours? Let me see this. If you think like a standard control paddle is usually like 16 millimeters, Thinner. It's probably approximately half that. Okay, yeah. So it's thinner than yours by quite a bit, actually. Yeah, um, that one might be a ten millimeter. That would be my guess, but I because also, I don't know. The, yeah, that's probably true because it doesn't have that. Ed, it doesn't have an edge because the Onyx is a nine millimeter, but it has an edge, and that thing's thin. Oh, okay. And with an edge, it just looks so much thicker because the Lux doesn't even look that thick because it doesn't have an edge guard on it. Yeah, but going from the Lux Control Air to the Power Air, that's a drastic difference. I just can't imagine Jack would tomorrow. I'm, I'll bank on it that he will stick with this paddle throughout the end for doubles also for everything because pros want extra power. He's honed in his dinking game, major improvements with it, became way more consistent. So I think that he'll stick with this one. What it, What is your thoughts on changing paddles or? changing lead tape placement based off of singles and doubles that might make more sense up topper i can see someone playing so there's two types of singles players too there's more what we call the cat and mouse players that are playing more of a chess game and they're playing you know somewhat more of a doubles game within singles and then there's people that are just ripping the ball just all day ripping the ball and they just need that power paddle I don't think anyone should, it just, to adjust from one to the other, I don't think it makes sense, especially if you're at the pro level, you should be able to play with the same paddle in singles and doubles, in my in my opinion, but lead tape is a good idea. Uh, why, why don't you talk about some of the locations yeah. that we would put lead tape? So if you guys are watching on Spotify, Spotify they can watch, right? Yeah. Or YouTube. This will be much better than those just listening, but I'll try to explain to those that are just listening. So if you want greater hand speed, it's going to make sense to put lead as close as possible, if not below your grip. Because the more weight that you get closer to where your hand is, the faster that your hand is going to be. You can think about it kind of as hammering a nail into a wall. If I were to hammer from up here, I'm trying to think about this backwards. Let's see. If I were to hammer while holding onto the throat of my paddle, I'm going to have a lot quicker hand speed than if I am to hammer from down here. It's a lot slower if I'm holding at the very bottom of yeah, my paddle and even hanging off. It takes longer to get from there to there. There you go. It takes longer. Whereas up here, like how Tyler Lung holds his paddle 
with the ping pong grip. I don't even know where his finger goes, but it's somewhere around here. Yeah. Super quick hands, but then he's not getting as much power. Further down that you go down your handle, the more power. It's the same with lead tape placement. The If you put lead in your handle or close to your throat, you're going to have quicker hands. As you come up to the throat area, this is going to enlarge your sweet spot and increase your overall control uh, because that lead is closer to where your hand is. It's also going to help you to have quicker hands than going further up because that weight is distributed down closer to your hands as well. If you want a bigger sweet spot, put it in the throat area. And then on the sides here, what are the sides even for? I feel like it's just an in-between. I know that there's a specific word for it. I can't think of it right now. Tyson McGuffin, I know he used to do sides right when I first started playing. Yeah. I can't remember. And and I did too, and I didn't notice much of a difference, to be honest. I don't like it on the sides. Except for mentally, like I thought maybe it was doing something for That's me. what it is. It's uh, the twist. So, like... I don't think it's specifically twist weight, but total vibration as you're hitting through the ball. Oh, okay. It's going to be a lot more stability is what the word is. Couldn't think of the word. Your overall stability. So it's not going to go like this shaking back and forth. For those of you listening, I really don't know how to explain this, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to shake back and forth as you make contact with the ball. Twist is a good word yeah. for someone that's not watching. There you go. It's not going to twist back and forth as you hit the ball. It's going to stay stable. As you hit through the ball, which is ultimately going to create a more stable shot. And then the further up you go, putting lead up at the top, you're going to get more spin and more power. Because the more weight that you have up there, the more of a whip that you're going to be able to create to create more spin. Also, the more whip that you're going to be able to create to create more power. So if you want more hand speed, put lead in your grip. Or I personally... You guys can see in this paddle, since this has a hole in it, I actually put the lead inside the hole. That's going to help me have a bigger sweet spot, plus I'm going to be sacrificing a little bit of hand speed, but not a lot because it's close to where my hand it's a good idea. is held. Um, but I recently listened to Pickleball Effect, and he was talking about lead tape placement, and he did a ton of experiments to figure out. Yeah, he does those pretty often. Yeah, to figure out where to place your lead that will make the biggest impact. And he said specifically putting it on the outside. I guess this would be outside or inside edge. Again, just get on YouTube or Spotify. Right here, he said, this will give you the biggest uh, bang for your buck. So, I, yeah, I would still say outside edge above the throat area. Above the throat Basically area. Basically the sides of the head of the paddle. On the bottom. But on the bottom, yeah, instead of up towards the top of the head of the paddle. He said you put one piece of lead or tungsten tape here, it will be equivalent as putting two pieces on your throat. So I tried that, but my hand speed was slower. Uh, because the weight was further up, noticeably slower. Yeah. So I'm like, yes, I see your point. That's going to help with enlarging my sweet spot, but my hand speed's slower. So I like to put lead starting here at the bottom of the throat of the paddle all the way up through that spot, maybe a, like a quarter of the way up the flat part side of the paddle uh, just because I feel like I'm sacrificing hand speed if I don't. And I'd rather put more lead to make up that difference, like how he was saying, in the actual throat, uh, so that I have higher hand speed. hand speed. And it's like I can afford, you know. So you can have best of both worlds. Putting on another penny of of lead so that I can have a quicker yeah. hand speed, which I'd prefer because I like to hold further down the paddle. Down here is a lot more comfortable for me so that I can get my two-hand, my second hand on there. Yeah. If you don't have a two-hander, I honestly would recommend holding up here near the throat. Really? Which I know you probably don't agree with. <laughs> because if you don't have a two-hander, you might as well gain more control and and hit that. Obviously, you're going to lack a little bit of power. Maybe put some lead up here. But your control is going to be Tyler Loom off the charts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, or Callan Dawson, too. Or Callan Dawson, for sure. Yeah, I started out playing that way, and I've explained this on the pod before, and then my hand has slowly moved down, and now I'm playing with my hand, like, partially off the handle. 
Uh, Which is know. why you have so much countering power. Yeah, it's just it's what's comfortable for me, and it's made me more consistent personally, but I know everybody's different. What I wanted to point out, too, uh, well, two things. Like you said, Travis Rettenmeyer, pro, who was on the pod, I watched him do his lead fairly recently, and that okay. was actually the first time that I saw someone put lead within the handle, and that makes a lot of sense to me. I don't know why I hadn't tr- thought of that or tried that before. But try it out. It would be a fun spot to put it, if nothing else, and see if you can notice a difference in your in your hand speed by putting it actually underneath your... I would suggest putting it underneath your undergrip. So then then putting on your undergrip exactly, and yeah. then putting your overgrip. It might be uncomfortable if you put it only beneath your overgrip. I would assume you'd be able to feel it a lot more in there and probably not very comfortable. Uh, Could even cut through over time. Uh, What I wanted to point out with my Gearbox Pro paddle is I get this comment a ton. And people are like, well, if you weren't playing with an illegal paddle, it would be closer (laughs) or... You know, it wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to hit it as hard if you weren't playing with an illegal paddle. Well, first, it's not illegal. They just figured out a way to make them faster. But I play with the Pro Control version. The Power version is the one that you'll see that's like brown and gold right here. I've I've don't play with that paddle at all. I actually play with this Control version. And the purpose of this Control version is so that it doesn't bang off of the paddle as fast. Mm-hmm. So I still get enough speed, but it's not so much that I can't control it. And so I would suggest if you want to go with a Gearbox Pro paddle and your game isn't all drives and power, or even if it is, try this control version and see if that works a little bit better for you. But anyway, what I wanted to point out with this is control means... And their, their purpose for doing this so that you can control the ball and it doesn't ricochet off the paddle, you know, and become like what a delaminated paddle would do or what a super power paddle would do. Um, it's not necessarily any anything with a carbon fiber face. You're going to have enough spin power. You're going to be able to put spin on the ball and control it in that way. But any control paddle, typically a thicker paddle, its true purpose is so that the ball doesn't fire off of it. Right. Something interesting is my, I've played with two total since October. I've played with two total Lux control errors. And the reason for that is because the core actually crushed. So there's delamination, which is where like it's a trampoline effect where the core starts getting crushed inside. And then there's like a little bit of a gap it starts to appear. So then that gap appears, the ball makes contact and that gap goes back to small as it makes contact and then slingshots it off essentially mm-hmm. like a trampoline. Core crushing is very similar. The actual honeycomb core of the paddle breaks down and it creates that slingshot effect. So it absorbs the ball further and then spits it back out further. Right. And so it just launches the ball. Essentially they're the same thing just with a different makeup. And so it was interesting. My, uh, I didn't notice because I was just like, I just hit rockets, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and my friends are like, your paddle's delaminated. And I'm like, it's a Lux Control Air. Like, these can't delaminate. They don't have a delam. They're like, no, like, your, your core is crushed. Let's see. And then they, my friend Justin came and uh, smushed his fingers on it. And it's like, you could hear it. Like, that is a crushed core. So then I switched paddles and... So yeah, I guess that is different than delamination, but still has a similar effect. It's, yeah, it's almost the same exact effect. I don't know okay. what's, what exactly is different because I don't know paddles that well, but yeah. it was kind of interesting. But I've played with two since October, so I switched. That was probably in December that I switched. And I've been playing with the same blue one ever since. So that was a gold one and then I've been playing with the same blue one ever since and I haven't had the problem at all. So I don't know if some might break down and others might not, but that's something that's also interesting. I just watched a YouTube video from Pickleball Studio about that paddle, and he was saying after a month it breaks in. 
and then it becomes a slingshot, like bit more of a slingshot. Oh, really? And so I was like, interesting. So he did an update. He did an update on it. Yeah. Not with mine because I never play, but for those that <laughs> yeah. actually play. Break pickleball. it in. <laughs> <laughs> and he said the break-in period is going to be a lot quicker for those that drive the ball a lot as compared to those that, like, never drive. Hmm. But. Which, if you're getting that paddle, you're probably a banger. Yeah. <laughs> I would assume. Yeah, you want more power in, on your drives. So, I mean, there's definitely lots more that we could talk about with paddles. I mean, we could go into a lot of detail about them, but maybe bits at a time is the best way to do it. And I think you've pointed out some important yeah. some important keys to how you can make your paddle better. Um, but let's go circle back to the beginning, like what you said. Um, when you're making the decision of which which paddle to get, if you're just starting out playing pickleball, I would definitely suggest a thicker control paddle. And keep in mind that most modern paddles now, if you want to get a good paddle, you're going to at least want a carbon fiber face. Wouldn't you agree with that? Oz? Definitely. I mean, it's It'll just last. anything, anything that's not a carbon fiber face is maybe dated slightly. Uh, not the best of paddles. If you're on a budget, I mean, you know, maybe you don't have to, but even budget paddles you can find with a carbon fiber face. And I would suggest starting out, starting with a thicker paddle. I started out with a thinner paddle. I, I won't say who the, no free advertising here. I won't say what the brand was, but they had two versions. They have a 16 millimeter and they had a 13 millimeter. And I'm like, well, uh, they say that the 13 millimeter is the faster one. So obviously I'm getting that, but that didn't help my game at all because my dink game struggled a lot. Yeah, I still didn't have the dink game to control the ball. So I would definitely suggest starting out with a control paddle and you may end up keeping that for years. Like I still stay pretty much with control. But over time you may want to you learn that you have better touch and you want something with more speed that's thinner, then by all means do that. But I'd start out with control. It's just interesting. You go to pickleball courts, you will see this paddle more than any other paddle on the market. Yeah. This paddle, the power air, and it's you're watching the people play and it's like they're beginner level, maybe they're three point five. Uh-huh. maybe 4-0 everybody's playing with the power air yeah. and it just makes no sense it's opposite of what it should be but it's because they see all of these pros playing with the power air yeah. power air is going to be your least consistent paddle this is a paddle that people should play with if they're professional they play pickleball 24 7 they have it down to a t they're not going to miss a dink yep. that's what that paddle is for the paddle that i would suggest the most It's like how Spencer's saying a control paddle. I think that the best paddle, the best paddle that I've ever played with is the Lux Control Air. But like how Spencer's saying, it doesn't have a carbon fiber face. So the carbon fiber face is, it's going to be long lasting spin. It's going to stay on there. Yeah. The Lux, it's going to be three months and then it's going to be pretty shaved down uh, if you're playing every single day. But you'll have had killer control while it worked. But it's literally the best paddle until that shaves down. Oh. So yeah, try to find one with a carbon fiber face if you can. Um, there's every single brand has carbon fiber now, but it What's, has to be a control paddle if you're a beginner player. Yeah, and most every popular brand, we would definitely suggest Gearbox and Selkirk, um, but most brands will have something that you're looking for. What's the latest paddle from Selkirk? Isn't they that just came out with yeah too? The Vanguard Control. I played with that for a couple of weeks. I just had to go back to the Lux because, like I said, I just absolutely love it. And it's like where I'm at now, I can just... I probably go through my Luxes. So I've had two, and I've played with those nonstop other than those two weeks since October. It's March now. Yeah. And I've gone through two, but I play a lot more than the average person. Yeah. And I hit a lot harder than the average player because average player is probably a 3.5, stuff like that. And so that's why that core crushing happened. But, I mean, my surface is going to wear off sooner too because I'm hitting with more topspin than the average player Sure. as well. So I would say you're probably going to get six months out of a Lux if you were to buy it. Whereas with the Control, uh, Vanguard Control that just came out, it's really close. It's a fantastic paddle. 
but it's not even comparable to a fresh Lux. Hmm. Just couldn't even compare it. But yes, carbon fiber face is going to last. It's going to last you a year, year and a half. Yeah. And if you guys have further questions, let us know in the comments. We're happy, happy to answer what we can. Yeah. We're not paddle experts. That's not our bag, but there's definitely certain things that we've learned through trial and error over time and from other people, like who you've mentioned, that you know we can help you at least determine which is the right paddle for you. So Yeah. And we'll be honest with you, not trying to get sales. Yeah. In fact, we won't even share our uh, affiliate links or okay. whatever they're called, affiliate, our promo codes, because we're not trying to get sales uh, necessarily. Yeah. But it's just this is actually what we would suggest doing. Like we said, other brands out there will have carbon fiber surfaces. Um, we, no. we love ours, but you can decide for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I've never played with a better paddle than... The Lux, that's personally for me. A lot of people say it's too soft for them. But it's like if you're a beginner player, that's what you're going to want. Yeah. Uh, for me, I don't play enough to to want to play with the Power Air. I would just have no control. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I would I have to play consi- way more consistently and film a lot less, which I'm not going to do. So. <laughs> yeah. Filming comes first. Yeah. Everything? That's it. Nailed it? Okay, hopefully that was enjoyable for you guys, insightful. Like you said, comments are appreciated. Leave them below. We will get back to you. We'll answer them. I finally connected to the Picklehead YouTube so I can see comments coming through and stuff like that. Whereas before, I was just on Pickleball Playbook. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll both get back to you. Um, so, yeah, ask away. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Later. Picklehead Podcast. Picklehead Podcast.